In class, I mentioned my frustration with the mezuzahs and flatbush, and I was asked to explain, so here goes. These are typical mezuzahs sold in flatbush. First, let's go through the tagging. The letter shot in his gets, shin ayin testin zayin, gimel tzadik, the triple tagging. As you see here, there are three straight lines on the shin, three straight lines on the ayin. These are the way the tagin look in all these mezuzahs. These five mezuzahs were all bought, and I confirmed that at the store, were bought in local Flatbush stores. Now, let's look here at the way a tag is supposed to look. The shatnas gets, this gimel, these are the way they're supposed to be. A zion well formed on top, and this is the way it should be. What about Bedechaya? The letters based on the kuf ches yod hey, need a single tag. As you can see on this mezuzah, there are no tagging, not on the base, not on the dalit. Mr. Bruce says, Ken makal, he's supposed to have a stick coming up. It does not have it. How should it look? Again, now this is from Wikipedia, whose olive base is far superior to the mezuzahs in many homes. This is the way what the Mishabura calls a makal is supposed to be on the bays. Incidentally, a bays is supposed to have a protrusion on the right, according to Minik Ashkenaz, according to the Mishabura. And these mezuzahs don't have that either. Now, the third thing is the lamid. All the lamids here are flat on top. A lamid, according to the Mishabura, should have tagging as well. Again, looking at Wikipedia, these are the tagim. Now, two tagim on the lamid. Let's look at a proper mezuzah. This is the way the mezuzah should look in your house. And as you can see, the triple tagging are done neatly. The single tag is done properly. And every one of the lamids has tagging on top. This is a mezuzah. This is the way a mezuzah should look. Look at the difference between this mezuzah whose olive bay is very similar to the ones in your Sefer Torah, as opposed to these mezuzahs sold here in Flatbush, which a Sefer Torah could never be written this way. People would look at it and say it's no good. Now, Sefer will tell you, Tagim don't parcel a mezuzah. It's true. But mezuzahs that have sloppy Tagim have other psulin. The mezuzah is totally sloppy. I'll give you an example. Look at this mezuzah. Hashem Elekecha, there's no proper space between the words. It looks like one word. And that's something that passes even with the Evan. Another example. Over here, in this mezuzah, Ha'ela Asher. If you look carefully, that this olive, the space between the hay and the olive, and the space between the olive and the shin, is the same. Ha'ela Asher is written as one word. The apostles with the Evan. When you have sloppy mezuzahs, you can have many other mistakes. An example. In this mezuzah, every one of the tzaddiks is written with the yud of the tzaddik way out of line with the body of the tzaddik. That's not the way it's supposed to be written. A tzaddik is written, as we have here in this mezuzah, with the yud over the, as part of the letter. You'll say it doesn't passel. Let's go back down. Look, and the mezuzah I showed you previously, look at this tzaddik. This tzaddik is possible because the, the, the yud of the tzaddik is not a yud. It has a lateral line connecting it. The cipher was in such a rush that it doesn't have the tzura of a yud at all. And it's totally possible. And there are many other examples of sloppiness in all of these mezuzahs. It is a problem. And it's a problem for which there's no excuse that in our community there should be uh, mezuzahs of that type. And therefore, we have to call out the cipher on selling these types of mezuzahs. Now, let's go and take a look. Maybe a cipher will tell you that he has a shita that this is the way the tagging of Shatnis gets. It's supposed to be three lines. He tell you he has a shita, he has a messiah, he has a kabbal. Let me show you something. 
I'm going to pull out the pins and unroll and roll up this mezuzah and look at the Shem Shakai on the outside. Look at that, the same cipher. Look at that beautiful tag on the Dalit. Look at that tag on the Yud. Bader Chai is supposed to have a tag. Look at the well-formed tagging on the shin. Why, on the inside, he doesn't have a single dalid with that type of tag? He'll tell you, well, the end of the dalid is good enough. So why on the outside does he write it the way it says in Mishnah Because you see the outside. And when you see it, you notice it, he wants to do it right. It's dishonest to have the outside proper and the inside in an improper way. These are problems that are very common. Take out your mezuzah. See if it looks like this mezuzah. See if the dalits look like this, if the letters are so poorly formed. I should mention another example, the letter gimel. In the letter gimel, the right foot of the gimel is supposed to be lower than the left, even though in the printed mezuzah it's not way. It's not that way. The right leg has to be lower than the gimel. Now this one is actually slightly lower, but if you look through these sloppy mezuzahs, you will find that it is not consistently done correctly. Because when you're in a rush, it's very, very difficult. It's very, very hard. Is the right gimel let lower than the left? I don't see it that way. These are problems of soul. If your mezuzah looks like this, well, it should look like this. And if we will insist that the, we want to buy L'Chathchila Mezuzahs, we'll get L'Chathchila Mezuzahs. My experience is, here in the shul, that the flatbush Mezuzahs that were purchased were, in the overwhelming majority, the poor ones at the bottom, and not the beautiful ones, like this Mezuzah here on top. We can do better. We build beautiful homes, we spend money, on alarm systems and bell systems that cost a lot more than mezuzahs. Our shmira is key of mitzvahs, doing mitzvahs properly, and that is with mezuzahs that are the way they should be. Come on, Kalah Yisrael, we could do better.